Welcome to week two of our discussion based on Stephen Furtick's bestseller, Crash the Chatterbox. My name is Mariah and I'm the author of Faye's Journey. And today we will be talking about the distinguishing between the chatterbox and the voice of the Spirit of God. And if you've been with us already, then we've already discussed what the chatterbox is and how it affects us. So let's dive deeper. When you're presented with an opportunity, at that exact moment, what are the thoughts that you begin to hear? Do you end up seizing the opportunity or shying away from it? And even if you do seize the opportunity, are you then bogged down by thoughts of, um, or wrestle with insecurity and, and anxiety and doubt and worry? See, we all have those thoughts in our head that are either discouraging us or encouraging us to take the opportunities that God has presented to us. The voices or the thoughts that we end up listening to will determine the future that we experience. So we are going to learn to take captive every thought into obedience to Jesus Christ. Before we start trying to bring thoughts into captivity, we have to be able to discern which thoughts are from the Spirit of God and which thoughts are from the chatterbox. So let's talk about the spirit of affirmation or what Stephen Furtick refers to it as the spirit of affirmation versus the spirit of condemnation. Another way of putting it is the voice of the Spirit of God versus the voice of the chatterbox or the enemy. Okay? so. The Spirit of God or the voice of affirmation is generally going to be an inviting uh, tone. So it's, it's always going to push you closer to the Lord. An example would be if, if you're thinking that you need to study the Word of God more. Um, the Spirit of God is going to remind you of certain scriptures you know the Lord is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him delight in the Word of God right um, it's going to tell you that or remind you that there are promises and truths in there that will help you live a better and fruitful abundant life which is what Jesus Christ came to give us um, the spirit of condemnation or the chatterbox is going to make you feel inferior um, it's going to exaggerate and accuse you of things. So it's more of going to sound like you don't really love the Lord because you don't even study. Uh, you're fake, you're phony, you don't even understand what's in it. Uh, you have X, Y, and Z to do and all those take priority over the word of God. And that means that you're not a Christian. So the, if anything, the chatterbox or the enemy is going to try to steer you away from the Lord, right? So the voice of the Spirit of God is going to try to lead you closer. It's going to guide you closer into a relationship with, uh, with Jesus Christ. And the voice of the chatterbox or the enemy is going to try to discourage you from getting closer to the Lord. So the enemy uses chatter to target four main areas that will hinder us from pursuing God-given opportunity. He's going to target our insecurities, our fears, he's going to use condemnation, and he's going to use discouragement. So in a good amount of time, the enemy will actually covertly use people to target those areas. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. Stephen Furtick likes to refer to the voice auditions. He says that sometimes it seems like we're moving through life like the voice auditions. And if you um, don't know what the voice is, what happens, um, contestants come on stage and there are four judges that are turned around. They cannot see the contestant. All they can do is hear him. And the contestant begins to sing. So if the judge likes what he or she hears, he pushes the I want you button and the chair turns around, right? And that's an indicator that I want you on my team. And sometimes our lives do feel like that. 
We are singing our hearts out for judges that we've assigned in our chairs. And I wanna ask the question, who have you appointed as judges in your chairs? Is it your father, your mother, your family? Is it your self-absorbed boss or leader? Who, who is in the judge's chair that you are performing for, wanting that validation, craving for them to say, I see you? Um, who are you singing your heart out for? Uh, who do you want to push that button? Who do you want to call you out so that you can begin living the life that God has ordained you to live? Some of us go through our entire lives waiting for those judges that we've assigned to turn around and they never do. But can I let you in on a little secret? The one who sits in the chair, the only chair that even matters or counts has already turned around. The one who called you to sing or paint, write, dance, or start a business, the one who formed you in the womb to finish school or to be in your child's life or to teach or prophesy, the one who is worthy, the only one worthy to sit in a judge's chair has already turned around. And that's in spite of our weaknesses, our insecurities, um, our doubts and our God-given abilities, our lack of preparation and our lackluster performance or, and our failure to meet somebody else's standards and ideas. With, in spite of all of that, God still turned around and said, I want you. Let's remember that man's rejection or their lack of acknowledgement is not at all an indicator of God's rejection or an indicator that God does not see you, he does. Jeremiah's ministry was rejected by his own people. God knew that Jer Jeremiah would be rejected by the people that he was prophesying to, the people that he was warning about God's incoming wrath. Jeremiah chapter 1, 17 through 19 states, they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. His gift and his message was primarily rejected, but he didn't act based on their rejection. He didn't procrastinate. He didn't um, shy away. He went out with full confidence and assurance. He acted based on God's word to him. I am with you. And they may push back when you try to step out and they may be critical of what you're trying to do, but do it anyway, because God is with you. Unlike the voice auditions, you don't have to sing a single note to get God to notice you. He has already canceled the audition. The part is yours and he wants you to play the part with full confidence and assurance. I love this quote that Stephen Furtick has. It says, I have nothing to prove because I am already approved. So when we step out to seize an opportunity and we begin fulfilling it, we only need to look to God for approval, which he has already given us. If he's good, then I'm good. So our homework for the week is simple. We are going to start bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And we're gonna do that by having a thought captured journal. So whenever you begin to hear negative thoughts um, that are discouraging you or leading you away from um, having a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, I want you to write all of those thoughts down. Don't hold back, write them all down. And after you've written them all out, I want you to go to the Word of God and I want you to find scripture that combats all of those negative thoughts and write those scriptures down in their entirety. But we don't stop there. Based on the scriptures that the Holy Spirit has given you, I want you to paraphrase them into one to three sentences where you can remember it, easily remember it. Um, 
And then I want you to put it somewhere where you're going to see it daily or you're going to be able to readily access it when those thoughts try to come back. So personally, I like to create um, wallpaper backgrounds on my phone um, with those truths on them. So whenever I'm picking up my phone, I am able, I'm readily able to look at the truths and remind myself what God has um, told me and the truths that I need to live by. So the Thought Capture Journal has probably been the most effective and beneficial tool that I have received during this study. Okay, it's helped me acknowledge my thoughts um, and help me know God's truth um, concerning those thoughts. Uh, it helps me understand how God's truths are applicable to me in real time, and I get to be a little creative. I highly encourage that you try this strategy. It is going to prove to be one of the most effective weapons in your arsenal. And with it together, we are going to take heed of the voice of God and seize every opportunity with full confidence. See you next week.